We are getting closer to the total eclipse. More than 31 million people live along the path of totality for today's solar eclipse. That's according to NASA. Meteorologist Bill Kelly explains what totality actually means and how it will impact viewing the eclipse for those within and outside of its path. When we're talking about a solar eclipse, there's actually four different types. And the type that we have today is the best of them all, and it's called totality. So let me show you how that occurs. First, we bring in the sun, the moon, and the earth. And in a solar eclipse, the moon shadows the light from the sun, sometimes partially, today, completely. And that is what totality is. But how does that occur when the sun is so much larger? In fact, take a look at this, the sun 400 times bigger than the moon. So how does the moon shadow it? Well, the sun is also 400 times farther away. So when you think about that perspective, they look like a similar size in the sky. And if everything is positioned perfectly in a line, you're going to get totality. And today is one of those days. And it looks like this. It happens on the earth, somewhere on the earth, every one to two years, but it's pretty rare that it happens in our country. And I wanna give you a little bit of a different perspective. I'm gonna bring the map up and put in some cities. This is going to start from the southwest and move to the northeast between about 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And this is going to be moving. We actually have drawn the light here. That's the shadowing that's gonna cut across, traveling at over 1,000 miles per hour in totality, meaning it goes from daylight to darkness, some places three and a half to four and a half minutes long. An absolutely stunning sight to see. I wanna bring up another way to show you this line. What we've done is we've drawn this path. I'll take these cities out and along this line here is where it is totality. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to experience if you're not in this line. Where I'm at, for example, here in Philadelphia, we're at 90% totality. And what that means is the sun is gonna be hidden 90% from the moon. So you put your special glasses on, you look up, you'll see a beautiful sliver of the sun. It is going to be a great one. You will also, if you're in that line of totality, be able to look up and see the corona from the sun, which is amazing. That is the sun's atmosphere. In addition to being one of the most watched events of the year, the eclipse is sure to also be one of the most photographed. But how can you safely take the shots that truly capture this historic moment? We talked with photographer and visual storyteller, Anthony Quintano. Uh, the, the biggest thing when using a camera is gonna be using a solar filter. Uh, you're gonna damage your camera. Uh, it's the same reason why you can't look at the sun uh, directly with your eyes. Uh, you will damage the sensor uh, if you don't have a filter, not just any filter. You can't use an ND filter. You want to use a solar filter uh, to, to be able to block the harmful rays uh, from the damaging the sensor. All right. Use a filter. Use the glasses. Let someone else take those photos. Let the pro uh, people handle it so that you can enjoy the moment and be present looking up. And uh, I want to go back to Indianapolis, where Lana is more excited than anyone and looking really cool right now <laughs> in her full uh, Indy attire. Uh, you are, Lana, of course, where the uh, Indy 500 happens every year. We saw you moments ago getting in the car, talking with your helmet on. <laughs> uh, did you get to race? T tell us a little bit about what you've been experiencing. Which I didn't just race, Lil. Uh -huh. I raced an astronaut, Drew Postal, and he's actually one of the people who has spent the most time wow. outside of the Earth, out of the Earth's atmosphere. I gotta say, he beat me, but he has more experience <laughs> with speed. Indianapolis is the place to be right now. As you can see, the crowd's completely filling the stadium. Oh, lots of excitement Look at that. here! Woo! Everybody's ready. Yes. Everybody's eclipse yes. ready. Tens of thousands of people all here to witness this extraordinary event. The last time this happened was more than 800 years ago in Indianapolis, and we are making every moment count. So I think we win. I, I, I think you're in a great position to witness it and win. Lana, is this your first eclipse? I mean, talk to me about what you've been thinking about preparing. I know that you are all things NASA obsessed. So tell me what it's been like right. for you leading up to this moment that's about to happen in just over an hour. You know, my first time racing uh, an Indy car and my first time <laughs> witnessing a total solar eclipse. And I'm told that this is unlike any other experience that you can have. I'd say that riding in the IndyCar felt a little 
similar to skydiving. I'm told mm. that a total solar eclipse is actually going to beat that because it gives you this moment of perspective where the world goes quiet, at least in the path of totality. Even animals become quiet during that time, and we can feel it, and we'll witness that blue-hued corona outside of the atmosphere, right in the, the sun's atmosphere, right outside of the line of the moon. So I'm looking forward to it. I will report back to you about how it feels, but I'm told that it's it can even be like a spiritual experience and then to be around all these amazing people and experience that together i think will be something really special lilia i am so excited about you about this for you and for all of us lana i know how much you're enjoying it and i'm very lucky that our friend liz saved me a pair of the glasses so i'll be able to look up as well lana thank you so much now let's go back to Cleveland and bring in NASA Associate Administrator Jim Free. Jim, great to have you. Thanks for joining us. Um, what should people look out for when they're viewing the eclipse? What should we have in our mind as we look up? What are we spotting there? Well, I, I think, you know, first of all, everybody remember wear your glasses. That's yeah. the most important thing. Uh, secondly, you know, I think you can look at the path of the moon in front of the sun yeah. and just kind of appreciate the, the where we sit in the universe. I think there's a there's a, a bit of a, a mental image you should paint for yourself. And then during totality, to look at the corona, the corona, the sun is somewhere the, where some of the hottest temperatures are. Uh, there's space weather, which is some of the uh, bursts that come out of the sun that affect us here on Earth. And just take a minute to appreciate uh, where we sit between uh, the, the here and the sun. Mm -hmm. and be inspired by the science. You know, that, that sense of wonder, I think, is something we do at NASA better than anybody else. And that science has inspired people for centuries, and I, I hope that everyone that views it today, from young to old, takes away that, and, and maybe goes research a little bit and understand the power of the sun and, uh, and our galaxy. Wow, um, it's, it's so fascinating to, you know, to think about, and it's so humbling to, to realize when you're, when you're standing there and, and remember our position uh, in the universe. It's, it's one of those reminders uh, when things change all around us and we're able to witness you know, the, the moon and the sun in this form. Um, how excited, though, is everyone at NASA now that millions of people are coming together to watch this and really give it the, re the relevance that I'm sure um, is regarded there in NASA as well? Yeah, it's, it's a great day for us. First of all, it's the path of totality passes over one of our NASA field centers today, the NASA Glenn Research Center here in Cleveland. So that's a sense of excitement that is, uh, is quite rare. But, but also, um, you know, this is, we call it in our science organization, the, the big year of heliophysics. Heliophysics is the study of the sun. So we have the event today where we'll be launching three rockets before, during, and after mm -hmm. the, uh, the eclipse totality and, and measuring the changes in the ionosphere, the magnetically charged part of the atmosphere. Uh, we also, our Parker Solar Probe will fly through the sun's corona in December of this year. So it's a big year for us mm -hmm. in studying the sun. But look, we're, we're spurred on by science. We're doing science on the space station today. We have the James Webb Space Telescope take, bringing back incredible pictures throughout the universe. And we have our plans to take people back to the moon and land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon in 2026. Gosh, such exciting developments. Talk to me a little bit more, because you mentioned it uh, somewhat there, but what is it, what's the data, or what, what is it that you're observing and collecting uh, today from, from NASA? So some of the things we'll be doing is measuring the changes in the Earth's magnetic field. Mm -hmm. when, when the sun sets, there's gradual changes in the magnetic field and how our atmosphere reacts to that. During the eclipse, the bottom is gonna drop out of the magnetic field because the, the moon will come right in front of the sun. Mm. So that's, that's one of the things. And then when we look at the corona of the sun, we always learn about how the sun is behaving what happens the, at the sun that affects he, us here on Earth, what's gonna happen, what could happen to affect our satellites and even our astronauts on the International Space Station with the, the electrified bursts that come out of the sun and 
change how our electronics operate. So there's plenty of opportunities to learn for us as well. And, and the crew on the space station will actually able to be able to see the, the eclipse go across, uh, across uh, the Earth today as well. And Jim, before I let you go, I'm curious, are eclipses uh, different? I mean, when you see totality, when you're on the path of totality, you look up, uh, say you do it again in uh, 21 years or whatever the next one is, is meant to happen. Is each one a singular, different event? Does it look different? Uh, it, it will It will look the same. The distance, it's unique. Very The distance bit, uh, between us and the moon and the moon and the sun allows the sun to be perfectly captured. So mm -hmm. it'll, it'll look the same, but it's going to feel different for everybody. Mm -hmm. you know, the temperature is going to drop. How the animals respond will be very interesting. So each experience will depend on where you are, but the premise is still the same, the moon blocking out the sun. Jim Free, thank you so much for that.